without a thank our associate the Reverend Lisa Richardson for her leadership in our worship today Amen. and for the reading of God's holy word. It is the third epistle of John, chapter 4. The verses were 7 to 21. And she read it good because I heard somebody in here responding to the reading of God's holy word. And I'd like to take just a few moments of the time to focus in on verse 8. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, for your goodness, your mercy, your love, your truth, and your grace towards us. As we continue in worship, we delight to bless and to praise your holy name. We ask, O oh God, that you would pour out your spirit upon your people and upon your preaching. Fit, fix, and use us, one and all, to your name's glory and honor. If you do it, Lord, we'll be careful that we give your name praise, honor, and glory. We will forever, from the very depths of our souls, declare that Jesus did it. For we ask it all in his name, and even for our sin. This third epistle of John is the third of three. He is the writer of five books of the New Testament. The Gospel of John and revelations. He was called the beloved disciple because from his calling to the discipleship to the death of Christ on the cross, John had been a trusted disciple of Jesus. And somebody announced earlier that there were disciples uh, in Mount Pisgah. Be true to your calling and give the world evidence through your life not only that God loves you, but He has also saved you. Now, we may have to share this thought that it is not a follow-up to David's writing, to Paul's writing. In 1 Corinthians, 15, 13. We all know it so well. It's called the love chapter. And it concludes saying, and now these three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But love is the greatest of all. God's love is all over me and it's keeping me alive. I don't know if that choir was in my study at home while the Lord was speaking to me. It seems to me now that He was speaking to them also and then they spoke to us in song the words of life. God, of, God love is unconditional. You ought to know that you can't buy it. You can't earn it. And you can't bargain for it. God loves us with an everlasting love. Whenever Reverend Phyllis calls me on the phone, but I talk to her, she reads a message. She reminds me that God loves me 
with an everlasting love. It's a love that never fails. It's a love that keeps on blessing. May I say, here at Mount Pisgah, every Sunday morning, when Sister Gordy gathers, comes to the microphone, and she begins to sing, I'm blessed just to be. That's the first thing I want to talk about. Because God's love comes to us in three dimensions. The first dimension is called blessing. Now, we're all blessed to be here. But everybody and anybody who is alive this morning no matter their life story, God loves them because He created them. God made you, he, he made you. And He loves us with an everlasting love. Worship for me really begins when she sings that intro. I'm blessed just to be here. And it is a blessing come into God's house. You know, it's not strange, but it's interesting to me that God blesses everything and His blessings keep on keeping on. In other words, He keeps on blessing me over and over and over and over again. He just keeps on blessing me. Everybody on the earth, this fact. Blessings are random. Everybody and anybody can receive a blessing from God. If you wake up in the morning and then you stand up, you're blessed already. know why so many more of us do not understand this. God is blessing me even right now. It is a blessing to come into God's house. And as He has blessed you to make your way to His house to give Him thanksgiving and praise, His blessing over and over and over and over. Everybody in the house this morning has a testimony about how the blessings of God flow in their lives. I remember our brother Job. Now everybody knows Job had a very hard time. Things were seriously wrong with him, his family, his property, his work. Everything. Everything. However, Job said to his wife, no matter what happens, I'm going to love it and I'm going to serve it. It was a hard charge that she gave to him. Why don't you just curse God and die? Sometimes we have a lot going on in our lives. That's what the doctors tell me all the time. We got a lot going on. But in all of that going on, the living of life, God is faithful to remain with us, to keep us and to sustain us. God once said, my grace is sufficient. And that was music to the sufferer's ear that God's grace is sufficient. May I say, it was just by God's grace that we're here this morning. It's only by God's grace we were able to open our eyes and see the light of another day. But I think about all of those who did not make it. My heart cries out. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me. It's only your grace and your mercy. As I said, blessings are random. Even the vilest animal is blessed. Even if you don't know God, you still have God's blessings on you and in your life. So, blessing is the first order of business. And it's followed by this thing called grace. Blessing comes grace. Now grace is the unmerited favor. Yes, and the blessing of God upon your life. It's all by God's grace that we're here this morning. Believe that. Now, let me clarify where I'm going. The three aspects of God's love. The first is blessings. And it means to make someone happy. Sometimes folks will ask me, well, how do we bless God? It's not as easy as some might think. God blesses us because of who He is and because He loves us. And when we live right, when we walk right, when we talk right, God blesses us. Yes, He does. God blesses us. Like I said, many night. He wakes up in the morning, has the blessings of God on their life. And blessing the Lord is a mighty fine thing to do. So blessings are man of but God's grace is merited to those whom He chooses. You don't have any choice in the matter. Your blessings come in the form of God's grace. You know you don't deserve it. But somehow, some way, God forgives. I know He's forgiven you. Has He ever forgiven you? is the unmerited goodness of God. It is truly, I don't believe it, but it gives me hope because He loves me. His blessings provide to us His grace. Blessings, grace, and then there's faith. I have to testify. In these later years of my life, I find myself walking in God's faith. The thing about God's favor, it is just for the one who receives it. Blessings spread all the wrath. God's grace spread all the wrath. But His favor, His favor is just for you. God has a plan. And His favor rests upon us. His blessings, His grace, and now His favor. I am that I am that I am. And nothing can separate us from the love of God. May I say, death came. Life came. Our troubles, our sicknesses cannot separate us from the love of God. Even the angels won't separate us from the love of God. And all the power of hell itself cannot keep God's love away. 
So no matter where you are in life today, whether you're up or whether you're down, God is still with us. And His love is an everlasting love. And no one and no thing can ever separate us from the love of God. Random, somewhat like chances, they go random. And so very often we don't recognize God's blessing in our lives and we fail to give Him thanks just for blessing you and me. in a number of ways. Every time I lay my hand on a child's head, it's done for the purpose to bless them. They may not understand what I'm doing. They might not even like it. But I place my hand on their head and I say, we pray God's blessing upon this child and the family into which we're born. Now, they might not understand it, might not like it, but one day they're going to ask a parent, what was that? Why does he do that? And you've got to be prepared with an answer. He does it so that the blessings of God will be upon you and your whole God's unmerited favor is found in His grace. I don't deserve it, but God gives it simply because He loves me. He loves you. His blessings, His grace, and His favor are all ours simply because, as the Bible tells us, if we love one another. Now I know that's not the easiest thing. Everybody knows somebody. Whether it's in the family or not. They just don't like it. And they think it's an excuse not to love you. But I thank God for all the loving people that are in my life. I thank this family at Mount Pisgah more than once because you were a part of my healing and my recovery. Now, I, I, some of you might have heard, so let me fess up right now. Uh, earlier this week, I had another incident, another episode. And I found myself over in the ER at like an all hospital. One more. And uh, they told me I could go home. They don't always tell me that. They told me I could go home. And that I had to slow my road. Now, some might wonder why I do what I do here. First of all, God called me. And second of all, my pastor appointed me. So I'm here at my appointed time. I did not know that I would be here. But here I am. And I am living evidence of God's blessing God's grace and God's faith. I don't know what you heard about me, but I, I just want the church to know that all is well. All is well. All is well. I don't know what you heard about me, 
No, I don't. But I want you to know, the next time somebody says something to you about me, tell them I say, I'm doing better. I'm doing better. I'm walking in my blessing. I'm walking in my What happens to you? I resist and resent. Anybody telling me I'm, I'm getting old? I had to stop my siblings from calling me mommy's oldest. No, 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 no. I'm mommy's first born. I'm her first born. Ain't nothing old about that. And I'm a genuine mama's born. Even in those moments when I suffer those episodes, I found myself wishing that my mother was still here. She taught all of her children well. She taught us all how to pray. I can still remember. I don't know, I, I don't know how long I've been able to walk. But every night, before we went to bed, at first there was me, and then there was that, and then there was Marie, and then there was you. And it started to grow and to grow and to grow. But each one of us had to kneel down, kneel down, kneel down, and pray to the Lord. Now, Thou lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord, my soul will keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord, ah, my soul to take. Now, after that, we had to say, Dear Lord, bless mommy, bless daddy. But the list not so long. It got so long that some of us grew restless. But now, I know how to tarry. You know, I, I know how to tarry. Just hold on, just hold on until God speaks and He will speak. He knows all about us. He knows what we stand in need of. We can hide what we want from one another, but you can't hide from God. Now, my late great-grandmother, a deaconess Mary Cooper, down at Old Mount Pisgah, she used to tell us when she was taking care of us, God sees everything you do and hears everything you say. And that's when she gave me that message, don't ever tell a lie. Because buyers don't go to heaven. They didn't mean that much to me back then. I was too young to understand that she was passing on wisdom that would bless my life and allow me to know that God is still listening. His blessing, His mercy, His grace. Oh, hallelujah, glory. Glory to his name. Let me just read verse 8 one more time. And then I'm going to take my seat. The third epistle of John. Chapter 4, verse 8. Whoever does not love, does not know God, Whenever I counsel young couples before they get married, and I say, I know what you have decided to do, and I'm persuaded that God has blessed this union. He caused it to happen. But in order for it to live, two things must always be present. And the first thing is love. Love's got to be present. And the other thing is that life the life that God has given must be affirmed. We can't bring negativity 
into our lives or put it in the life, life of someone else. Amen. We need to be positive for all life. Right. For so many people are lost. And we need to show them the way. Right. Jesus Christ is the way. He's the way. Continue to walk in God's ways. Continue to walk in God's mercy and provision. Continue to walk in God's favor. And every day, every day, will be a blessed day. Every night will be a sweet night of rest. That no matter what's going on all around you, all around the world, you are in the tender keeping and love of our Father God. Because He loves you with an everlasting love. Amen.